Uh, is, this, is this the type of people you trust? Get that slogan again. Is this the type of people you can trust? Well, what are you talking about? When, uh, when, I, when, I get, when I show the video... From the I'm east to okay. the west, and from the south to the north. To the people, from Los right? Angeles, Estrella de Los Angeles, presenta a Mario Lino in a program that brings hope and family together touching subjects that concerns the community and family in general. Today's program has education, entertainment, politics, and a little salt and pepper to your taste. Yeah, 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 a little bit of salt and pepper to your flavor. Hello everybody, buenas noches, ¿cómo está todo el mundo por allá? Bienvenidos a su programa favorito. Esta noche conmigo está Pablo Miramontes desde la ciudad de Long Beach. My buddy Jan Brisco over here on my left. Así que mis amigos, y tenemos una señorita invitada esta noche, así que se va a poner muy bueno el programa. Tenemos muy buenos temas importantes que vamos a hablar. So, let's, uh, let's get into right now. Pablo, are you ready? Simón. Ok, este, te oigo un poquito bajita la voz, así que échame un poquito de energía. Uh, let's play the, the clip in there, please. Uh, one, one of the reasons that I, I'm, going, I'm going to play this clip is because it's very, very important. Our country is going uh, right now to uh, some hard times. We have a lot of people in, our, in power right now that they're not doing our, their job. They're not, they're not standing up for our country. They're standing up for a party. They, they got this narrative that they can say anything that they want, and whatever they say supposedly be real, and it's not real. And one of the things that I'm trying to get the listeners out there is to understand that the country is not really the country that it used to be 20 years ago. It's been changed completely, and the politics running the country is not really working for ourselves, which is the people. They're supposed to go down there to Congress or the Senate to represent us, and as far as I'm concerned, they're not doing that. They represent their party. They're not representing the people. Well, Mario, they're, not putting, they're not putting country first. They're putting party first. No, a good example of that is uh, Roberto Garcia that I'm running against. Garcia stood up and, and swore up and down that Hunter Biden's computer was false, fake, uh, was a plant, a Russian plant. And, and it turns out the Hunter Biden computer was terribly real, full of all kinds of evidence. And he was doing it to toe the party line. The party line was to scare away the Republicans from doing any investigations. And the scare didn't work. So, no, it's the party line. Whatever it is, you echo the party line. In this case of Roberto Garcia, he had $3 million, $3 million he spent against me two years ago. And, and a lot of that was millions of dollars was from Sam Bankman Freed. And Bankman Freed is in jail right now where he belongs. He stole billions from investors. So the, he's an example. Garcia is an example of people who have to toe the party line, do what the party says to do. Otherwise, they won't get any money for their campaign because the, the Sam Bankman Freed nipple is dried up. That's an example of the party line. That's what Pablo calls corruption, right? Well, corruption is when you put the needs of the corporations ahead of the constituents. Okay. So that's what corruption is. Or where you are easily bought by by people that uh, can influence your, your vote. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you can look at you can look at uh, third world countries. The reason why they don't work is because they have corruption. Mm -hmm. But, but, but uh, Pablo, <laughs> wait, wait, Pablo. Unions are corporations. Are they corrupt? You're a member of a union. Is your union corrupt? A corporation. You just well, said all corporations that. are corrupt. But unions don't have any power. They cannot. They cannot enforce the law. They don't have any. Union just means that that people got together and are 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 collectively acting together, the same way that uh, you know when when a corporate actually corporations when when they do collusion when when they when they work together to raise prices they all work together to raise prices. That's collusion. That's kind of like what. Or, or when they when they create associations, like when different companies get together and they create an association amongst well, themselves. Well, Pablo, those associations That's, were made by Democrats. How is that different than the than, laws than, to negotiate yeah. labor contracts? They have total corporation negotiating bargaining teams to bargain with a very powerful and influential unions, of which you're a member. Uh, wait, yes, yes, a minute here, uh, uh, Pablo. Uh, when you say the unions don't have no power, 
uh, is the opposite way. I think unions have a lot of power. <laughs> the unions, they, no. go, they go on strike. No. They stop. They, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, let me finish. And then you can go. They stop uh, businesses. They don't let you across. The unions have so much power, they can actually, that's the reason many candidates, they go and promise the world to the unions. The public unions. The unions in the private sector are puny. 10% of people belong to a union, and that includes the giant sector, including Pablo Miramontes with his uh, public employees union. The unions have power because they give away money. All a union has for power, actually, is they can withhold their labor. That's a strike. After that, there's no legislative power. Right. That, no that, that was exactly my point. The union cannot make a law. The union cannot remove a law. The union cannot do anything. Well, they, they buy the law. The, they buy and pay of, for the state legislature of California. Millions and millions of dollars with their, in their corporation. Unions are a corporation. A non-profit corporation, but they're a corporation, limited liability. So, no, they, uh, they, the all corporations never, are not. The union participation rate has never been lower. Like, like you said, the only thing really left is public unions. They used to be unions for, um, you know, like um, the United Auto Workers. But now you have Tesla, which is not unionized, that's also making cars. Uh, you used to have unions for almost everything. The restaurant, the restaurant workers union, the hotel workers union. They're so weak now. They're almost minuscule. Why? Because corporations have influenced politics and have and have uh, basically almost practically eliminated them. And that was what corporations wanted. And and look at, they think about it like this: at the time that the unions have never been weaker, inequality has never been higher. So, so it is the unions that were actually helping to keep the power of corporate greed in check. No, the union by, by the withholding unions, their labor. The only unions that have any robust vitality are public employee unions. They've lost about twenty-seven percent of their unions with the Supreme Court decision. The only unions exactly. that have and, any and, robust. Exactly, and that's my point too, because the Supreme Court is, is specifically attacking unions. They're not attacking that's unions. The Supreme Court said you can't make somebody pay money for political polemics and propaganda that they don't agree with. Okay. Uh, I think it's enough on the unions. Okay. Yeah, I think enough. it's, let's call it quits on the unions. Oh, by the way, just a minute. I'm union endorsed. For the record, I've been endorsed by the union. That's so, beautiful. Not for the Congress. Congratulations. Congratulations. But, no, Congratulations. Con but anyway, I, so it's not, I'm not against unions, but they don't really have any, they don't, they have tremendous financial power. So I, I, I want to go, I want to go to just this. As uh, corporations do. Okay, Paolo. Let, let's, uh, I think that's enough on the unions. Let's go and talk about, uh, you know, how you talk about climate change. That last week uh, we talked a little bit about climate change, how it was going to affect all the black people. Uh, now it was a study by uh, University of uh, Harbor. They say that the electric cars are more dangerous to the regular gas cars. It's been discovered that they pollute more than the regular car. Well, their manufacturing, their manufacturing is more polluting, and where they get their electricity from is more polluting. Because they carry so much weight. Yeah. So uh, what do you think, Pablo? Now that, now that we know they well, pollute, look, they pollute I, more. I'm a person of facts, and I'm a person of science. And I think that when you look at overall, uh, the electric cars are the future. I don't own one. I, I can't afford one because I, I, you know, I just, uh, it's not a priority for me, but I did get solar panels like almost 20 years ago, but I don't have an electric car because the science is not quite proven yet, and it's inconvenient because you have to charge them. My issue with, with the electric cars is that, uh, you know, they, they use lithium-ion batteries, which is, you know, those require special chemicals. The special, uh, special Elon chemicals, Musk, very heavy. Elon Musk, the, the richest man in the world has gotten subsidies to kind of Elon, get the, No, no, the fact check. Elon Musk has gotten no subsidies. The purchase of one of his cars delivers to the buyer a discount on taxes if they pay any taxes. 50% of the U.S. pays no income tax whatsoever. The, no, the, the Elon Musk has gotten nothing from the Fed. But who benefits from that subsidy? It's, it's, it's him. No, it doesn't benefit. I mean, look, look at he, his net worth. He raised his prices seven per seven thousand dollars to cover the seven thousand they get back. No, there's no benefit. It's uh, the people that buy the things benefit. So, Pablo, I have a question for you. If you could have a, a pretty guaranteed safe, 
and effective self-driving car. Would you drive to work instead of taking the train? I would. When Elon Musk lied and said that that in one year, this was like 10 years ago, he said in one year that his cars would drive themselves, I was very excited. I thought he was a hero. I thought he was like, wow, this guy's a genius. That was 10 years ago, okay? He still doesn't have a... The, yeah, the cars kind of drive themselves, but they're not quite there yet. Well, I, have so, a story, so, I have a story to share, Mario. Go ahead. I, go ahead. I called up the Tesla dealership in Long Beach, and I asked them about that Tesla pickup, and the guy told me, well, I can tell you that they're very popular... We only have one to show. We have none to really sell. You have to order them, and they get shipped to us. And I said, well, okay, so if I wanted to buy one, I said, I heard they were going to be $49,000. He laughed at me. He said, oh, no, they're going to be 55000 and that model won't be built for another three or four years. Our current two models are not 85000 and 94000 So I said, well, wow, that's pretty cool. He said, yeah, but we took reservations two years ago when we first introduced the announcement. Guess, guess how many reservations they have, Pablo? Oh, they have thousands, truck. yeah. A lot of people are excited about those. Zero? No, two million. Two million? Two really? million. I'll never be able to buy wow. one. Two million Tesla That's pickup trucks. That's too many. So, so anyways, the question is very, very important. You know, now it's been discovered All that right, so those cars are polluting more than the regular cars. Well, So, so what are we going to do? Not, that's not exactly true. So when you look at the totality of, of what the car is doing and what the resources use to, to make the car, uh, it... I still think that that the electric car comes out on top, but the but the batteries, yes, there's the batteries pollute. Uh, but if, um, they say they they pollute so much because they carry so much weight. Weight. Well, and, and they carry mining, so much weight from the batteries and the, the, the tires. Mining the lithium. The tires combine everything too. in it. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, did you know? Well, yeah, you buy those, a those cars will will you, will go through tires quicker because I've I've watched a lot of videos. Of yeah, them, yeah, so yeah, was, yeah. I was curious about it because uh -huh. not that I wanted one, but I I mean I'm just curious about the science about it. And and yeah, it's true. You're gonna waste a lot of tires with those cars, but over the lifetime of the car, those cars can supposedly drive. You can drive them for like five hundred thousand miles without you know oil change. You know it's um. You well, can use them for a long time. Pablo, I don't know if you knew this. Tesla cars can only be repaired at a Tesla dealership. You can't take it to a local auto place or repair it yourself. You must repair it with a Tesla Tesla repair spot, and, and then you that. pay yeah, Tesla prices. Because they're so complicated. Cheap. Even hybrid cars are, are very complicated. I oh, yeah. Think that you can yeah. even uh, just easily repaired by just any anybody on the corner. All right, so I thought I'd bring this up very very important segment. Let's play the video, please. Pablo, uh, we have to play this again because it is a very important uh, under election season. Let's play it, please. Now that all of this China stuff or Romania up or up up, see the faces. That's Roberto Garcia. Right there. This is Mr. Ruskin right there on my right. Mr. Ruskin, a senator, 19, uh, 2016, election denier. He's a congressman. He is an election denier. He stand up in 2016 and he said that Donald Trump wasn't real elected. He is one of the good, good ones right there. He's and an insurrectionist. Mr. He's an insurrectionist. And Mr. Roberto Garcia is the same thing. Look at his face in there. So, Mr. Jan Brisco, I'll ask you a question. Again, and Pablo, now that we know the truth about the laptop, about all the videos that they show when Hunter went and do the deposition, so much. I'm still waiting so, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, Pablo. So much, so much information into that hearing. You're going you're gonna to hear on, on live very soon, probably next week. There's so much evidence, so many uh, emails on it that they prove that they collect so much money. Can you trust these people to to represent your community? Well, no, that's what that's what investigations are. No, you so they, cannot uh, trust can, the Biden. Can you crime. trust Roberto Garcia right there and all these Democrats telling you that big lie right there? The, the Roberto, no, the uh, the Biden crime syndicate family is a huge problem. Uh, Roberto Garcia repeatedly posts on X and on Facebook that there was no evidence, not one shred of evidence presented in these hearings by Comer which is ludicrous. 
Uh, there was lots of evidence presented. He just didn't like it. And so this kind What's of uh, puffery. What's the evidence, John? What's the evidence? Is, is We've been waiting for, for three right, years. Pablo, Pablo let, let uh, Brisco finish. You, no. you, 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 you admit, Pablo, there was a computer there, right? And that computer, there was a lot of evidence. Yes. I, no, okay. The, we have a he computer. He has a computer. The I have computer a computer. The computer has a lot of evidence. The computer had pornographic stuff that, that Marjorie Taylor Greene put up. Besides, besides That's that it. has a lot of emails, compromises, the big guy. The little guy and all the other things. There's it not came a out. single email that it, that it came out. That's what the Democrat says. Is not nothing that is infl uh, inflicts uh, the, again, the president and everything. That's the what email. they say. I'm waiting Go ahead, John Briscoe, take it. No, I'll be like uh, Roberto Garcia, little Bobby. Uh, there's absolutely no evidence. No, Bobby, whatsoever. Roberto Garcia, please. Roberto Garcia, see, uh, nobody has presented any evidence that anything on that laptop is anything but true and correct. None. Uh, your, your suggestions or accusations that somebody put stuff on there is, is not in the general, it's, it's not anywhere. If it were true, yeah, but what, but the Democrats exactly? would have been trotting it out. No, the laptop sat in the FBI desk and they said nothing about it for years. And then they were finally forced to bring it forth. And there's copies of the laptop all over. The, the guy that had the laptop made copies and that's how Giuliani got his. Giuliani no, the whole thing. There's nothing on that laptop that somebody placed there surreptitiously and secretly. And so, so when you have a but business, again, what is, let, what exactly let me ask you. Let me ask you something, Pablo. When you have a business, for example, if you have a business and you have a low, very low profile business, what do you have to come up with an LLC? And where do you have to come up? All these people, the ex-wives, the kids, the grandkids, all everybody's getting paychecks from China. What is it for? And then they have no explanation to do that. Where, I mean, you tell me where is the money coming from? Again, what's the reason for the money delivered to all of these family things? For Joe Biden's brother, why? why? What are they so special for? What, what kind of a business? They what do they provide? What kind of business they provide? What kind of service they provide? Look, uh, Hunter Biden used uh, incorrectly used his influence to get money, but. Uh, his, his father's influence. He's got his father's swat. influence. Well, he wasn't. He was. He was not president at the time. So, uh, well, vice you know, president. That counts their name, for... But but it doesn't mean that that Biden was influenced by the money because oh. the the kid was just using. He was just using his name to to get to get famous. In the same way that Jared Kushner went over to again uh, Saudi Arabia and got two billion dollars because. Those people in Saudi Arabia want something from Jared Kushner. They want a return on their money. And, it's hard and, and to go Jared find Kushner, Kushner returns. Jared Kushner was in charge of the Middle East. Hunter Biden didn't have any power. He has no influence. Where, where's his influence? Jared, Jared, Kushner, Kushner, Jared Kushner come up with the Abraham Accords and everything. And what is yeah, uh, exactly, what is Hunter he, did? He was, he was able to influence it. Uh, but... Hunter Biden is not. He's just a drug addict. Like I, I don't, I don't see the the, the similarities here. They're, they're, they're so, so yes, because you're a drug addict, you can get away with all these things. Yes, that's true. Not at all. He's is he, that is that what you're trying to say? Let's defend the guy just because he's a I'm drug addict. I'm not defending him. I'm okay, what about what about that, Joe Biden? Yes, because he's too old. He cannot be accused of no crimes. He can't if, think if about you it. He's too old. Anyway, that Joe Biden is involved, and in, I want to see the proof. Okay. I haven't seen. Ex I haven't seen. Any proof at all? You haven't seen no sorry, evidence I'm at all. Say because because several weeks ago, I said that if there's proof, then then I will hold uh, Joe Biden accountable. But I haven't seen not a single proof. The, the more I look into it, the more embarrassing it is for for the Republican Party. Because so so Trump has I'll 91 go, indictments. I go. Uh, I'll ask you. Indictments. I'll ask you a simple question, Pablo. Knowing what you know right now from the party that's in power right now. So far, okay, you say there's, there, there is a computer available, there is some, some emails and everything. And knowing what you know right now, and all the cover-up in between the media, all the news media that there are in Cajons with the party in power, you still trust the Democrat Party to run the country? Even though that you last week you say it's unacceptable what they're doing. No, that's, that's you, not you, what I said. You, you, you still trust, I, I, you still have tr full trust said. in the party? No, I, I said that the, the, the Democrats haven't been doing a good job of, of representing people. 
uh, there's corruption in the Democratic Party. So you still you, you don't trust you don't trust but, them to but, run to but, run the country again. Are, I mean, are, are we gonna are we gonna say that just because the Democratic Party is not perfect that we're gonna go to the fascist? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm asking. No, wait, I'm, wait, 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 wait. I, I'm, I'm, I'm is, asking a simple fascist. question. Like, I'm a simple man. I'm asking a simple question. You still trust these people after you hear all this up? Well, if, you, if, if you have a chance if, to if vote, you at, do you vote for them? now? there is. Well, we just had an I, election. They call it a I, secret I have ballot. No, I have no other option because, I mean, what, when it comes to voting, you have A and B, right? Yes. Uh, and, and by the way, I voted for Katie Porter for Senate, just like I said I would months ago. Uh, well, so what about that nice John Briscoe for Congress? <laughs> You were you were not in my uh, in your area. That's oh, right. Area? Uh, I tried oh, really? last oh, year. I tried to like, vote for Briscoe, and I where I went, he wasn't there. You know, and I said, "Well, what the hell?" I mean, yeah, you know, sliced out part of Long Beach. Yeah. And so anyway, so I voted for her. She didn't win. Uh, but when I look at Adam Schiff, like between Adam Schiff and the Republican guy, it's Adam Schiff all the way because at least he's telling the truth. Adam Schiff. Adam Schiff's telling the truth? Adam yes, Schiff. Adam Schiff tried you to You gotta give me a break, Pablo. Come on. He, he, this is the guy that carry. This is the guy that what? Lie about? Pablo, Tell listen, me listen to Adam me. Schiff lied about. Listen to me, Pablo. Pablo, Adam Schiff, since 2016, he's been lying and lying and lying about what? one, one after thing another one. About. Give me one thing that he lied about. Oh, so many of them. So many, no. I cannot count them all, to be honest with you. His lies are subtle, Pablo. He goes, well, I have secret information because That's I'm the on the That's the reason he got replaced from the it. intelligence. Yeah. I have secrets I can't tell you about where I got the information from. But, but trust me, this is Schiff, trust me, it's terrible stuff there. And there's no terrible stuff there. No thing, and it was, the Democrats ran the whole thing for two years. That whole ridiculous charade for the January 6th. Yeah, uh, TV it's, show it's, it's Steve on. Garvey told him straight oh, no, to his the, face. Uh, wait, January Pablo. 6th, wait, wait, Pablo. Steve Garvey told, told uh, Anna Schiff to his face. Says, Excuse me, sir. You lied to 300 million people, and you cannot take that away. And he didn't give an answer right back to it. You know why? Because he is dirty. I, Adam Schiff, yeah. You remember that? I don't know. I, no, I, you don't know I, what to I, say, I, right? I actually watched Steve Garvey's uh, acceptance speech. It was a very nice speech. I know, yeah. He's really, uh, he's, uh, you know, he's, nice he's kind of mellow. He's uh, no energy, right? It, uh, you know, I, I, I got to say, okay, he, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah. But, but Adam Schiff is trying to hold Trump accountable. And Trump needs to be held accountable because he's a criminal. Okay, but uh, wait, 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 no. Trump, wait, 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 wait. If I had my choice, Trump I would have won. It's too late. Uh, it's too late, Pablo. Now, Adam Schiff cannot hold Donald Trump accountable. He's worse liar than Donald Trump. If you put and him Trump in a basket, is, yeah, Trump is not a criminal. If you put him in a basket, I think I guarantee you, and I wait, Adam Schiff <laughs> is the worst liar in the history of this country. <laughs> You haven't given me one lie that he did. That, that oh the, well, because there's so cool. many, there's so many I can't recall. You know what I mean? Well, he was. Can okay, you? No, he was oblique in one. his lies. Oh, there's one. secret I, things. I can give you, I can give you a list of all the things that Donald Trump has done, and I can show you videos. I can show you proof. Tell, wait, tell me well, one. You wait, know. wait, wait, tell me one crime he's been convicted of. You called him a criminal. What is one crime that Donald Trump has well, been convicted he, of? He actually raped a woman. Okay, you see it. He admitted to he admitted to doing it to multiple women on tape. Okay. Before he became president. And then, because of the statute of limitations, he couldn't be held criminally liable for that. But instead, he was held civilly so he's liable. Not a, he's not a criminal, then, is what you're saying. So, so back right. in those days... Let me finish. He, so he got $8 million punishment. And then, he kept saying that he's innocent. But not only was he saying that he's innocent, he, he, he was putting her down... And so, he, and so she took him back to court well, yeah, again. She couldn't remember, remember the date, the time, or the place. It's otro, that's what. Anyway, no, the, the that uh, was all in the court. That was all in the court. All that, the type, the date, and time and place was all in the court case. I guarantee you, you can look it up. That's no, it wasn't. One that was that was the. That's just one example of the crime that that Donald There's Trump no crime. I, there is no crime. Yeah, There's he no didn't get crime. Well, the He's been convicted crime. of. Look, uh, do you no, remember no, uh, no, O.J. Simpson? No, 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 do you remember no. O.J. Simpson? De ahora? Yeah, sure. But no, Pablo, there's no crime. He's accused by all kinds of people. He's accused by somebody who says his $500 million, billion dollar Mar-a-Lago is worth $13 million. This is totally unbelievable fantasy stuff. It's politi politization of our justice or no justice at all. No, he's not, he's not a criminal. He's been convicted of no crime. Not a single okay. crime. None. And if you keep calling him a criminal, that's ill-advised. It's not true. It's not correct. It's not nice, Pablo, and you're nicer than that. 
Go you ahead. may think Go. he has criminal behavior, but he's not a criminal. Yeah. Go ahead and play this other video. Are you listening to yourself? You said he's he's got criminal behavior, but he's not a criminal. How did you say that? <laughs> What's that? What's going on here, Jan Brisco? He's not a criminal. He's not a criminal, but he has criminal behavior. That's said, a mix. I said, Pablo, you think he has criminal behavior? <laughs> he just admitted that he's got criminal behavior. So he's Come on, Pablo, you're putting my buddy in a wall in there. Be careful. No, I'm let's <laughs> let's be fair, okay? Let's be fair. This conversation, this is a very important. You remember this one, Pablo? The pro coat oh, from yeah, uh, Joe said, Biden? Son of a bitch. I made him give the money back. Yeah, that guy. Is that any evidence on a corruption, Pablo? Actually, that, that shows that, uh, that the fact that Joe Biden was against corruption, it actually shows that he's got integrity. I'm sorry to say that. Integrity and what? That, that he didn't want to give the money when, when they had a that Ukraine had some corruption and some and, corruption Ukraine's yeah. all corruption it's horrible yeah. right so so they weren't so it's not that he made the decision unilaterally it's it's that uh, he said that they cannot give the money when when there's corruption there no he said fire so the there attorney. isn't anything criminal I heard, about I heard it the attorney speak this is different than this is different <laughs> than what than what uh, Donald Trump tried to do remember the phone call that Donald Trump tried to Force them to find evidence to create, fabricate evidence against Joe Biden. Pablo, let me let me let, let me stop you right. Was let me stop you. Let me stop you right there, Pablo. He didn't force nobody. He asked a simple question. There's rumors going on over here that this is happening in in uh, Ukraine. Can you look in for me, please? He asked him for favor. Can you look into all this because I think it's not really good what's going on out there. That's all he says. A simple question. And by the way. If it's not a crime, you know, he, he was impeaching everything twice, but it never went through because it was no substance. Yeah, because the it, Republicans it, weren't willing to hold him accountable. No, that, it, remember, it's, look, it's not, that, it's not a crime. Look. It's not a crime. Ask a question, Pablo. Come on, man. It's not a crime. To ask a, a simple question like that. But it's it's the tone and it's the way that he asked. Oh, it, the, the tone. tone. If it I would, was, if it was I, a pressure oh. campaign. It was a pressure campaign because that's just the the surface of it behind the scenes he had giuliani going around and put no pressure. they just have nice wait, 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 audio of donald giuliani trump in ukraine what no. was giuliani doing in ukraine he, he's supposed to go down there and ask little questions whatever but the bottom line is everything focused on that phone call that he did and if, if you think and you can trump, ask a question it's entitled to the same thing as the yeah, elections but mario there's 15 people in the basement of the white house listening to every word the man utters whether it's biden or or uh, trump or whoever Every word is recorded, examined, and looked at. So Trump said these things knowing every word and everything he said and did would be closely looked at. It was no accident or example. He knows they're all listening. He wasn't, oh, surprise, they recorded me. I had no idea. I thought it was secret. There's no secrets like that. Look, there isn't a single thing that I agree with political, politically with Liz Cheney, but she knows. What does she know? Because it, it's, funny, it's funny that only the women are... Only the women have the balls to stand up to Trump. Liz you know, Cheney, you know what, Pablo? I'm gonna give you credit for what you say right now. I know they have diff women have a lot of balls, sometimes <laughs> bigger than men. To be honest with you, and when, since you brought that up, I'm gonna give you a good example. When we put the five, six Democrats out there lying to it, to me, to me, it's much better if you give me five, six ladies in charge of the Congress. They have more desire and more honesty than men, to be honest with you. I think a woman would lie less. As far as Liz Cheney, I'm concerned, she is completely lost. She lost her principles. She lost everything. She went along with this Democrat thing that they did for January 6th. None of the none of the stuff that they produce is real. They never everything they never look, mentioned they never mentioned at, Pablo. They never the mentioned they never mentioned yeah. the lady that got killed in there. They, uh, when the people dies. On that particular area on January 6th, they never mentioned the lady. They never give her the credit for. It's, even though she was a Marine, she would have got all the services from the Marines, but they never mentioned, they deny everything. Oh, and some and of those that is on top that of the in, Congress. That was all in, in the investigation. What are you talking about? They never give her the did credit you go look at being the, a Marine. Did you look at the report? Did and you, yet, the report and you know what they did? They turned around and they put the police inside to rest in the cabin of the Congress and there for days and days. And the guy died out of a stroke. He didn't die of a bullet no, or anything. I've, I've heard Congress. This is unbelievable what they did. Claim that dozens of people died on January 6th. I don't think either one of you 6th. saw the, the, the 
you just made up your mind before you saw it. You didn't see any of the any of the evidence, any of the the thing that they did. You didn't watch the 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 hearings. None of that thing was produced the right way. It was produced by a regular show, CBS people. They produced the show for no, them. You didn't see you didn't see all the hearings about January six. You should. No, well, I wasn't that's really history. interested because that's history. Look, whether you agree with it or not, you should watch it because that's history. That's the reality of what happened. I, I can watch it now, but it's not available. Of course it is. Everything is still available. You can go to the website and find it, or you can find archives on YouTube. You so can watch. Uh, so why don't the they release? Why don't they you release it? You can watch both the hearing and and the report, the January sixth so report. So Pablo, let me ask you something. Why don't they release all the footage? The, uh, take it the was. Repo it was released. Uh, take the Republicans to release all the hours. Republicans haven't released it either. There's well, they, they got more coming up. They got more coming up. Yeah. Maybe, but they still have. That's it nonsense. Because look, the the reason why some of it is not public is because the footage has secret tunnels and stuff underground that that you don't want people to know where it is so the but so the, the january is, 6 people got in the secret tunnels really no there's video footage where where all the the insurrectionists were in those tunnels and they were going through those tunnels and there's, uh, there's Pablo, Pablo, i don't think they got i don't think they got through that far I, I, they, the closest they got into the doors of the congress they never got to the tunnels come on let's i don't be real. need to see all the footage to see that there were people that were in the Capitol that shouldn't be there. In the tunnels? No, I'm outside. Yes, I seen a lot of people outside, but they right. had the right to protest. And I saw plenty of people inside there. There were there was even Republicans running for their life. Uh, one of them, uh, he thinks he's a big tough guy. He even wrote a book that he's a big tough guy. But there's a video of him running around like like a scared little kid. Oh, that's uh, what's his name? Uh, Jolly, uh, Holly, Holly, so, uh, Holly. Yeah, Holly. Yeah, he's a, he's a cool guy. I like that guy. Yeah. Uh, Come on. I mean, he's he's a pussy. I, I like from what he stands for, Pablo. That's all I say. He stands for nothing. He what? just wrote a book that says he's a big man. But but how come he was afraid of, of the pro-Trump insurrectionists? I mean, I Why think everybody everybody's entitled to no, protest. They, they and in America, rioters. we have the right to protest. You know, that was okay. I mean... There are rioters who broke into the Capitol. Yeah, who wants to some... be around those people? I wouldn't want to be around them. Okay. So so at the same time, you say they, they shouldn't be there. But... But it's okay. Like you guys are okay with with people breaking into the Capitol. And no, 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 no. It's so, it's, uh, they I have, don't get it. So they, they have the right to protest, but, Pablo. But it, some people got out of line, and they gotta be punished for. And uh, I agree there with that. There was a person who took a shit in in uh, um, in Nancy Pelosi's uh, office. That's not acceptable. Where did you hear that? I that's a new one. I he take his shoes. You guys put, are not watching the put, news. Put I mean, his shoes. On. Put his shoes on top of the desk. I will never take his shit in there. Come on, that's he not did. true. That's, he did. Go, go watch the go watch the footage. That's, that's unacceptable. A, that's that. You think that's real? No, it I, is I real. For sure, Pablo. I'm gonna gonna, I'm gonna check it out. Somebody that, had is to that like a up. lump of coal in your shoe? Only it's a lump. <laughs> no, they they didn't belong there. They were rioters. They're not insurrectionists. They're just stupid people that went out on a rampage, and it was and they'll well all down okay, the other hand, were you shouldn't be held in solitary confinement. For, for who's, who, who's who's the person who made them come there? Nobody. They made That's themselves. Donald weeks. Trump doesn't control people. There was no guns. Nobody pointed. And then the other side is that once you've been accused because you're big on crime, Donald Trump has no no crime convictions. These so, people are being so held in solitary let's confinement. Let's end this. Let's end this up on a simple phrase Three that years. he say. I don't know if you remember, Pablo, but if you want to hear it, uh, be all right. Uh, I will suggest you to open up your ears and listen to what he says. He says, I know you guys are going to pretty soon going to go to the Capitol and do protest. Do it the right way. Go and protest and go home in peace. You remember those words? No, he, didn't like that. he didn't say that? Mm -hmm. Okay. He I, said, he I have an excellent it. memory. I can I can find you the video right now and I can play it for you. Yeah, Trump's okay. speech was Good. nothing about insurrection. Yeah, it's in there, Pablo. But you can search for it, and if you can play it for us, that'd be great. But he uh, did yeah. say that ahead of time. He said, mm -hmm. "I know, pretty soon you guys are gonna go down there and protest. Make sure you do it right, but make sure you go home." It's there. With that, that alone, that the guy is in peace. He can go to sleep at night time because he didn't provoke none of this stuff. He didn't say go and kill somebody like the. The ex uh, guy, uh, the prosecutor uh, of the nation, uh, what's his name? The black guy uh, under Obama. He says, "When they get up, we kick him." Oh, that was the, the guy that got uh, yeah, sold yeah, the guns to Mexico. Right, that guy. Uh, he didn't provoke or say, "Go and uh, do something bad." You know, he never said that, Pablo. 
So, a whole lot of Democrat very congressmen. Clearly, so, a lot so, of Democrat there, so therefore, as far as uh, okay, so I have a homework. Okay, so look. Okay. I have a homework. I'll, I'll find you the video for next week. Okay. Fair enough. And you, and, and can you find me homework? Yes. Uh, the, your homework is to find me actual evidence of the Biden hunter. crime. A uh, hunter. Okay. Got it. Ten four. Oh, no easy. forget. Very Wait. easy, right? You you just said there's plenty of evidence. There's a crime family. Oh, too much. There's so many so many texts. Okay, I'll, so I'll, I'll find easy text. To find one, right? Just I one. I'll find text when the text that he says I'm here. I want to see. I am here with my Remember, father, and I want to know why was, you why you was, haven't uh, sent me why you haven't sent me the money. My father wants to know because if you don't send me the money, the deal that we drop up is not going to take effect. That's evidence. Yeah, but I want to see. I, I want to see actual proof that's provable. Okay. Well, not innuendo, not made-up stories from uh, um, James Comer, who who has actually taken back and admitted that he was exaggerating what he what he had. So okay. He actually has. There's a video of him. Uh, maybe I could find that real quick. All right. So let's uh, talk about something else, Pablo. Are you ready for me, Mr. Briscoe? Oh, I'm always ready. I would like you to, uh, since you now on a uh, ballot for these people to vote for you, I would like you to ask. The viewers to vote for you for reason so and so and so because you want to be to a service to them. I'll do that. We had a touchdown. I won. We had an election yesterday. I was on the ballot against three Democrats. I beat two of them, and Roberto Garcia running for re-election. He still is... stand up in there. What? He standing up against you, right? Oh yeah, he's standing up. Okay. He's... Um, uh, I'm running against Roberto Garcia, and hey, I. You're I, a family man. You. I'm the family man. Yeah. Asuna de nosotros. I'm the youth advocate, and I plan to win the district with the what I call the northern tier: Huntington Park, Cudahy, uh, Bell, Bell Gardens, Downey, and and so on. And that's uh, it'll be the district's 50 percent Hispanic. Those cities, some of those up there, Cudahy, are 95 percent Hispanic. I will win those those cities and those voters. Many who will cast a Republican ballot for the first time in their life because I represent the things they represent and stand for. And, and that's, uh, so I won, we won. I'll be on the November well, ballot. Congratulations for... on, on going to the next step. Because in California, the way it works in California is they take the top two. And so you, instead of a primary like we used to have where the Democrats choose all theirs, their candidate and the Republicans choose their candidate, um, the idea is if, if we allow them to choose the top two, it kind of moderates things, you know? Yeah. At least it gives Republicans a chance. Otherwise, we would just have, um, you know, I, always I like the, I like always the, blue, I like the way you know? Paulo presents it, is it gives the Republicans a chance. Uh, <laughs> I, I agree with you, Paulo, but I mean, you know, since the, so the, the, the whole the state is blue, 100% is hard. No, but there's but, actually, but you, you know, know, there's, you know there's, 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 there's a lot of red. There's a lot of red in like, there's a, there's a good. And, I'll be honest with you, there's a good... A good chance. I thought uh, Steve Garvey has a good chance too because uh, he has to keep uh, head in the drum, you know what I mean? He has to knock down the guy trying to tell the story, you know, exactly who he is and who's been for years, you know, Adam Schiff. So I'd like to go to another well, I subject. I have to say that Republicans had a pretty good, pretty good uh, showing. Yeah. Although. So, so, know, so I, have a, I have a little, uh, a little segment that I want to bring in. I would like to have uh, my guest to come in. Can you, uh, she has a mic in here? Come, come in, sit down. Ponga su micrófono, señorita, por favor. So, so is, is, uh, your name is what? Yes. Evelyn. Evelyn, uh, what? Judith. Judith. All right, Pablo, so uh, finally our guest, I want you to know this, you're so important to me tonight that we wait for, uh, we, uh, wait for the show for a half hour to start. Because oh I wanted to get you, you, you uh, interested uh, comments on this uh, no. Thing that is going on in our country. Okay. Can you taste the mic? One, two, the one, mic? Two, one, Her two. microphone is One, two. There you go. Yay, we have our guest. Hooray. So, there you go. we got Evelyn. Uh, today, Pablo, I'd like to introduce you to her. And uh, you might as well be welcome before we go into this uh, segment. Hello. Hi. How's everybody Pablo? doing? Hello. Hello. Where are you? Hello. Where are you? I'm here. You who? Okay, here's my guest. I cannot see her, so. Oh, you can't see her? Okay. Why? You, are you on a picture? No, because, the, I mean, he, he didn't enable the video for me, but okay. that's okay. Can you see so, her now? No. No. You can, you can see us either? No, I can't. Okay, no lo puede ver. Okay, well, you're missing. She's really nice. Jan Briscoe, <laughs> welcome to my guest. Welcome. Nice to meet you. 
Ok, señorita, bienvenida al programa. Vamos a empezar de lleno. En este This is a good segment, well, Pablo. I want, you to, senora, I, I, want you to, I want you to be aware of what's going on in this uh, thing. Uh, today, uh, in uh, Channel 2, CBS News, which is part of the Democrat Party, the part of the uh, Legend News, they were saying that uh, there's 85 niños disappear and they don't know where they are. They can't count with them anymore. Uh, one of you has to have a little bit of answer because we know what's going on with the trafficking of child and adults. 85,000 kids. 85,000 kids that disappear from a center in Virginia, the state of Virginia. They don't know where they went. They disappear automatically. They don't know whether they went to the right family or the right people. To me, uh, in that particular area, they have, you know, the, the Secretary of uh, Transportation, is Pete Buttigieg. You know, he, is, uh, he likes uh, men, and he adopts two kids. I don't see nothing wrong with it, but I don't think kids uh, will have a good structure uh, having uh, two men raising kids. I think they'd be better off with a woman. A woman is, uh, to me, is like a lion. When, when you see your kid in trouble, you go and defend her. When they want to rip your kid off your hands, you know, you jump on it. You say, hey, what are you doing with this? It's my kid. What do you think you're going to go with it? You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, Pablo, I would like you to make some comments on this uh, segment. The missing kids. 85, the missing kids. kids. About the missing kids. So, yes. Well, I don't know about this particular case, about the 85,000, but I do know that every year there's over 300,000 kids that are that are missing. and And it's not exactly something new you know you can go back 50 years they used to put children's faces on the milk cartons because uh you know there's a lot of sick people out there they would take children sometimes trick the children into thinking that it's their own child and that they're the parents or sometimes like the sometimes some of these kids have grown up to be adults and they're like oh i didn't know that i was that i was stolen you know i didn't know that and or sometimes uh you know they they abuse them Okay, so let me go to Judith. Uh, what do you think, why, why is this monster is happening right now more than, like Pablo says, 30 years ago? But right now it's very, very hot. It's a popular thing. I want to say that it has to start, or it, we have to go back to the root. Okay. The root of the family. That's where it all starts. To me, that's where, that's where we're losing our concentration. Most parents, especially here, uh, we're, we're too busy working. We're too busy trying to obtain things. We're too busy doing other things that are taking our, our um, concentration from our own kids. Our own kids need us. They don't need the school. They don't need the, the people from you know associations in different areas. They need our parents. They need their own parents at home structuring them, giving them the discipline, the love, and the attention that no, they no, need. No, 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 you're all wrong. It takes a village to raise a child, not two parents. It doesn't take a mommy and a daddy. It takes a village to raise a child. Well, the origin was <laughs> mom and dad. Yes. And yes, the help you and didn't the catch assistance that. He's of being the sarcastic. society. The help and assistance, <laughs> but the responsibility comes back to the parents. Oh, no, yeah, Hillary no, no, told no, she, us she, it she, takes she, a village. She, she, she's right. When uh, John Briscoe was saying is it takes a, something bigger than mom and pop. That's no, what he's trying to tell you. That's what he's trying yeah, to tell you. Yeah, no, and I understand. Yeah, well, yeah I, I mean, well, I completely understand that. I, but I, so, so uh, wait, Pablo, let, let her finish the talk. Yeah. Yes, I completely understand that. Uh, that's why I said let's go back to the root. Mm -hmm. The root of it is that we as parents need to be more aware of our children and be more res take more responsibility for our own in our home. And yes, the assistance of the society is needed. I never said we're, it's not needed, but we're not letting them take charge over. Okay, or let do me the let me ask you a simple question because I'm a simple man. You think mom and pops plays a big role into? Definitely. Uh, because they're busy, they're working so hard, and they can't keep up with the time and the kids and the, the iPads and all this stuff. They're growing up so fast. And basically, you know, there's not enough love in the house. There's not enough attention. No, there's not, not enough, enough attention in the house. 85%, and daddies. 85% of black babies are born without an identified known father. It's a huge social problem. It's one that Nobody really addresses the core. Cong Congress for Racial Equality has talked about it. Nobody else wants to bring it up. It, it's, a, it's a disaster for the children, the boys and girls growing up in broken homes with no, no, no daddy. And then mom's out busy working, trying to support the kids. It goes down a path of poverty. And then they go to lousy, crummy schools because that's where they live. Yes. And it's a self-perpetuating cycle. 
It takes a mommy and a daddy, to, or two daddies, or two mommies. It takes parents to raise children. Not society, not the school, not the hospital, not the government. It takes parents. Okay, and uh, now, uh, Pablo, do you have anything to say yes, on this? Uh, so, yeah, I, I actually agree uh, completely with uh, John because he's saying that, that, that we have to give, we have to empower our parents to be good parents. Uh, I actually, you know, I, the, the foster, I have a foster child and he, he actually is African American. So, um, the, the thing about it is, and I also agree with, with your other guest, I'm sorry, I didn't get her name, the, the, um, that we have to, a, a lot of parents are very busy. Sometimes they have two jobs, three jobs. Sometimes they're never home. I remember sometimes I was alone when I was a kid. Um, but parents always have to look out for, for their children. Where are they? Uh, did they get home? Are they by themselves? You know, they have to pay attention. Or, or who are they with? Who are they with? Exactly. That's another thing. Uh, you've right. had situations where, where you leave your kids at the <clears throat> church and the priest was doing things he's not supposed to. So... Um, you know, that's, that's all things that parents have to think about. It's, it's a very scary world. Um, and it's so getting, I, and it's getting I, worse, Pablo. So and I'm Pablo glad you, did, and I'm glad you touched that. Uh, since you adopt two kids, Pablo, I did, oh, only one, one. Okay. Um, did you, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your experience the, in the beginning? How do you adapt to them? Uh, let's say for example, when you went to this place and adopt the kids, what's the process? It's because very because what happens? The reason I bring this up. Uh, you said foster care, not adopt. Fa fa foster, yeah. okay. Uh, That's heroic. I, I want to bring this up because this problem uh, uh, begins in uh, 2016, 2008, when Obama became a president. That's when we start getting all these kids. It built it built up all the way to 85,000 kids in different centers, I assume. But they claim that they had, they had 85 kids in Virginia. The problem is how easy it is to go and. Uh, and adopt these you kids. Know, yeah, yeah, I would like to know. No, uh, you, you cannot. It was easy cannot, for you? No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So I, I actually know about this because that's why I, that's why I said. people cannot just go and adopt those kids that, that are at those those places. That's not how it works. Though, if, if the child has a family member that can claim the child, either here, hopefully here, uh, they give those people priority. They always give the family members priority of any, any child. Okay. Now, uh, the question is, how do they, how do they know that that's the family member? That's that's what I guess Trump's excuse was for who is the family member. So that's no, why he started. No, it wasn't Trump's excuse. Wait, wait, wait. That's why that's why he Trump started separating families. Which no, was it's not. Uh, no, 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 no. Fact couldn't, check. Let's fact you, check. You, you, fact you get, check. You get into politics. Go ahead, John Briscoe. Uh, Obama, Obama, was putting families with children in jail, in, in detention, cages, in, in cages. camps. And yeah, but look at there the was numbers. a court case that was launched. Were, a court numbers, case was launched against that, and he lost. And the court ruling was: you have to keep children separate in children facilities where they belong, not in jail with a bunch of adults, even if it's their family. The children do not belong in jail. So Trump inherited that okay. decision, and that's why. Uh, okay, the that's it. like she says, I like to get into the need of the problem. Why yeah. is it we have the problem? Why do kids need to be locked up for? Because they are crossing the board. Is that is that the yeah, only thing the, that they the, do? Uh, the alien influx, the invasion is. Okay, but why bigger. why do we invite them to come in? Uh, well, there's a lot of reasons. I so think. who's handling all this? Who's sending all these kids here? I would like to know. What do you what do you know about it? To be honest with you, um, it's a big secret. I, I think everything. Who holds, is, a who lot holds, of things who are holds the keys? Who holds the key, uh, keys? It's the politicians. Is the government agencies? Who does I holds the I think it's the, the government agencies. Okay, they do receive money from each, each, each child. Remember that, that we do, there is an agency that receives money for each children. So with that being said, you know that great, greediness in people is in, in the rice, especially with this economy that we're going, we're going through right now. And I don't want to get into poli poli politics, po politics, but at the same time, you know that money is needed everywhere. So you have these kids that are claiming money. Now, you, yes, it's true. We don't know where these kids are at. Even families are doing foster care just for the money. They yeah. don't even care about these kids. They don't care how they're going to be raised. They don't care what they're going to do after high school. They don't care about any of this. They only care that they're receiving a check. So, therefore, that is the big giant, and that's the big problem. We are here because they, they, they're just hungry for money. They're hungry for power. Not even, I don't even think, think it's power no more. I think it's more money. Money. We're oh, after the money. That's exactly. After it's, the money. It's, it's a black market, and it's controlled by well, money. And that's all it is. Recognize 
It's, um, it's, not, Pablo, it's Pablo, not about Pablo. You have two of your own children, and you have a foster care kid. I have three. I have three of my own children. Three of your own, and you have a foster care kid too. Yes. Uh huh. Wow, you're a hero. Anybody that adopts or foster cares is huge. Ninety percent so, of the children in foster care end up in the criminal the justice. Reason. They're very troubled. Yeah. When you bring a foster care child into your home, it's it's a beyond unbelievable adjustment. And the kids the kids that come in aren't one and two months old. They're they're older. How old was your foster care child when you brought him in? He was nine years old, and it's, nine years old, it's, yeah, it's, been it's, it's more knows? difficult than you can ever imagine. So, so oh. that's, why, that's why I asked you, Paul, in the beginning, so we learn as an adult, you know, how hard it was for you and your wife to adapt the situation in between the other kids. Well, well one hard? thing is, it, there's an approval process. It's okay. not easy. They investigate everything. They look at your history. They say, do you, have you ever committed any crimes? They come and look at the house. They do all kinds of things. Um, and then, and then you get on a, on a list, right? But you don't just automatically just say, oh, here, we, we have a kid. You have to actually be proactive and you have to participate and you have to look for, for kids. They don't just, because there's so many people that want them. They're, they're like people waiting and there's no- For foster care kids, really? Yeah, yes, everybody's because got people are picky. Yeah. Like they, they yeah. don't want they don't want the, the older but, one. They want but, the younger one. But let me yeah. ask you something, Paulo, uh, and, uh, and here for our guests too. Uh, what I don't get it, and I, I'm never going to get because this is, to me is not acceptable. Is if they have an office and you go and apply and you go and you go, the, I assume they go and they present you maybe 20 kids mm -hmm. of different colors, different shapes, different ages, and you say I like this one and I like this one. You know, like slaves back in the yeah, days. Yeah. Same it thing. doesn't work. It doesn't wait, work wait at all. Like that. Let me finish. I, I'm just trying to express myself. How is it that the government doesn't know exactly where these kids went? What family do they went? And to me, it's a simple answer. Is they, they can't administer the country. You think they're going to worry about the kids? They're not keeping the files on it? When, okay. you, when you go and apply for a kid, you're not, keep no, not writing no notes, so-and-so takes so-and-so. So so -and -so. Well, What's Mark, going Mark, on Mark, here? Mark, I want to know why, 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 it's not, the, why it's not there. The, 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 the divergence is that local social services do a great job in placing kids. They found a place for, their, for Pablo's foster care kid. There are a number of people who do it for the money. They're like a warehouse. They have bunk beds and three bedrooms. They've got six or eight kids they feed and clothe and send on their way to school and don't and do much else. But what I was going to say is that the, the problem with the missing kids is the federal government. The federal government just shipped kids off to people that claimed they were relatives and they didn't do the kind of vetting and checking they did on poor Pablo and his wife to take a kid in. They just sent them off on their way because they had waves and waves of children that were separate and apart from their parents because of the Obama court decision that wouldn't allow the kids to stay with their families in, in, uh, in well, okay. okay. Can, can judge, you, wait, 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 let me, let me have her elaborate on this here because it's a very, very interesting. That to me is a dear hard thing into my heart because I still don't believe that we have to go through this. None of these innocent kids have to be running around the streets for no reason. If the government cannot handle, then don't bring them in. But it seems to be like the government is in control of this, is fomenting it, and then when they bring it here, I would like to know what's the reason for them to bring them over here for? There's many hidden reasons that we might not even, you know, we're not even close to figure out why exactly, but there could be many reasons. The same reasons that our, our kids are being trafficked. Trafficked? I trafficked. thought it was going to be trafficked. The same reasons. It could be money. It could be sexual. It could be any. It, and there's it's just so many different reasons why these kids are uh, uh, disappeared. There's so many reasons. So we're never going to pinpoint just one reason. I think that that is something that we need to acknowledge. And, I mean, I, I can't really say somebody's to blame for, but I do think that we were very careless when the, all this kids came to, 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 to the states. When they came in, we were careless. We were more worried about, oh my God, this is so much we can't handle. So now let's just separate them because they shouldn't be together with all these adults. But at the same time, when you separated them, you incarcerated them. Exactly. And now they're, they don't have a voice. They can't tell us, oh, I am so-and-so. I am, uh, you know, daughter and son of. Not only that, they don't speak the language. Yes. They don't speak the language. Well, how are they going to How are they going to communicate what they're, f what they're feeling? Who are they from? Where they came from? They don't have a way to communicate. And, and you know, it's, it's, it's really hard. So we really can't pinpoint exactly what the reason of them being, uh, you know, disappeared. But I, I, could, I could mention it could be human trafficking. It could be organs. 
uh, uh, buying and selling. Mm. It could be uh, sexual. It, it, it could be many. Uh, this is not something new. It's, okay. it's, it's been around for a long time, so right? There's a lot going on here, okay? You're, you're a little bit confused about what, what when somebody Wait, oh, says... Pablo, so, so this thing is, has been around for a long time. Kids, it, could be, it, could be, it could be missing kids. It has nothing to do with immigration, okay? There might be some kids that are missing that have to do with immigration, but a lot of these kids that are missing... They're natural, naturally born here. They're, it has nothing to do with immigration. It has nothing to do uh, with. That's a different ball. No, no, that's no, a different ball. That, that's not the We're missing. We're talking about people that's coming yes. across the border the and they're, they're bringing here, yeah. And they ended up missing. Okay. Yeah. The specific case that you're talking about, where yes. is that? Where did it happen? Uh, it, I, I tell you, in Virginia, 85,000 yeah. kids disappear. They don't know where they are. They that, can't count that them anymore. That doesn't sound. 85,000 is a lot. I don't yeah. think that that's. I, I think that well, somebody made up a number. You, you well, see the what's pictures. What's the number them? that you, you, you see think the would pictures? be true? You see the pictures on a on a on a. On a it news. cannot fit ten thousand. Like let's say it was one 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 building. There's no more than ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand right. people building. And I I find it hard to believe that just the whole building kids would just disappear. That's makes I will no give sense. you another statistics right now, and it's a, it's a lot bigger than that. Okay, and I'm gonna I don't know what you're gonna tell me, and I don't know what you guys gonna say about it. Well, what do you say if uh, two days ago they proved that the administration is flying people from different countries by the 320,000 people from different countries flying to this country on airplanes so they don't have to bump to the airport, so they cannot be counted for? Is that an honest statistic that you don't believe? Yeah, that 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 number is almost impossible to believe. Oh, it's already been proved. I just did a it's in the news. You can search for it. Hold on, I just did a quick search. I okay. said uh, 320,000 in, in Virginia, it says that there's 600 missing children, no, not 85,000, but 600. That's probably in and one department, includes, one area. That includes, that includes from, it, it could be missing kids that are natural born citizens. It's nothing to do with, with, with immigration. So let's have our facts straight before we before we start misinforming people okay uh, let's let's very go. important that we tell the truth here okay okay no it is and we are in search for the truth i agree with you but that's the number that we got from the media okay so okay, anyways well, now, now watching, let's go let's go back to the, the let's go back to let's go back to our no, no, own no, government mario, mario watches uh, CNN and MSBNC or so, DSBNC. I guarantee you that MSBNC. <laughs> so, have, so, 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 wait a minute, Pablo. I don't, Pablo, I don't want you. Sorry, to, if, I if do he not want that, you. He would be much more informed. I do not want you to forget this. Three hundred and twenty thousand people flying across the country on airplanes. There's what? What is no your government that, is that's, up that's to? What are the they trying to do? That, that travel. That travel. Uh, just in, in in airplanes, just to to travel. No, no, they're coming no in on U.S. dime. Airplanes under the claims of asylum. This is called trafficking human people. So, uh, are you aware of that? Of the number that I give you? I truly was not aware of that. Okay. Uh, because everything that I do is more into the uh, the counseling part okay. of. Okay. So I move more into the counseling of finding out what is moving in the human's brain when we're doing all these actions, when we're acting the way we're acting. And as far as, you know, this kid's missing, of course it concerns me because I want to know what are we doing to stop it? What as, as humans we're really doing to stop this See, situation. one of the reasons that is my concern is in between these 320,000 people coming across the border, how many kids are coming into? Yeah. And, and they, what, what are they going to do here yeah, when what, they what get it is, here? Who's supplying all these people? Because the airplanes, they're just flying down there, pick them up and everything. So the, obviously there's a money exchange exactly. in here. Exactly. So there's exactly. a lot of money involved in here, Pablo. Well, look, the, the majority of people that come across the border are not children. They are, they are working uh, uh, age adults, uh, mostly men, between the ages of, you know, um, 17 to 30, you know, they, they, they come here to work. But that's, there, no, there is kids wait, in there. Wait, there wait, is. There's, 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 there's a lot of kids uh, in there. There is kids I, there. I know. I'm not denying that there's kids, but I said the majority, okay? So, so listen to so, my words very carefully. Oh, okay. So, so why Venezuela doesn't want to take his uh, uh, people, they, they come across the border and they want to send them back to Venezuela, and Maduro says, I'm not taking none of you guys back. Why is it? What's the reason? It's probably not very nice people, right? <laughs> well, they may not... Uh, because they have uh, population issues. The, the Venezuelan economy has been destroyed by, by American... Well, that's not a population issue. That's a bad administration, administration issue. issue. It's an administration issue, yeah. Well, it is, it is an administration issue. The, the, the country is a failed state. And, and uh, much of the reason why it's a failed state is because of our foreign policy. Oh, oh it's our fault? No, it's, I mean, it, well, yes, it is our fault because 
the the governments that we've had in place have sabotaged the the Venezuelan economy uh, because of American companies that that don't want that that wanted the oil for from Venezuela, but but they wouldn't sell it to us. Wait, so, so the wealthiest, most successful oh, country in the world. That's the, the same thing we tried to do with Iraq. Go, go ahead, the wealthiest, most successful country in Venezuela, who was turned into a dumpster fire by uh, not Maduro, who was before Maduro. Anyway, uh, elected by the people and his bullies in the neighborhood. What what that had nothing to do with the U.S. They they devoured themselves. They consumed all their excess reserves and resources with the money that the government before had saved, and they spent themselves down to nothing. It has nothing to do with the U.S. The so our, our foreign we, policy... Maybe we should have invaded look, and intervened, our, but we didn't. So, so, our, our, our foreign policy... Because, but look, whenever it comes to American companies, the government, our government, and that's Democrats and Republicans, we always stand up for American companies. That's why we went to go invade Iraq and pretend that they had ma weapons of mass destruction. We wasted almost two trillion trillion dollars over there. We went to Afghanistan, uh, and we wasted like almost like three trillion dollars there. We we are always looking out for the American companies, American oil companies, especially. So let me ask you something. And, and Venezuela what, has a lot of oil, and that's why, don't, why we why don't we are over there too. I'll, I'll say this: Why don't we are looking out for the kids, for the niños? Who's keeping an eye on the niños? That's a good question. Why are we not paying attention to the niños, to the future of America? And for that matter, if it's not the case, why are they bringing into this country? They claim that in the future, in the next 10 years, they're going to have nothing but robots in here. Why do they want all these human people here? Well, I mean, I, I don't think it's a concerted effort to bring in population. There, there are just people that want to come here because of their situation in back home. That's yeah. why that that's why an immigrant comes. Whether whether you saying what. Look, if you want to believe Trump that that they're making people come over here, that makes no sense. People have have their free will. If 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 the Maduro government or or uh, El Salvador government doesn't want their people there, the people will run away. But they'll go somewhere else. They could they could stop in Mexico and stop there, and stay in Mexico. But they choose to keep going because they have their destination is America. I actually met a guy on the train. Uh, he was from uh, I believe he was from Venezuela. He's a very nice guy. He's clean cut. He said he wanted to be an actor, uh -huh. and he and he was asking me a lot of questions about where they can make movies. He had no papers. He was homeless, uh, and I gave him some money because he's so he he's so friendly and he's he's very well dressed. He said he wanted to be an actor. He actually came here, and he he was illegal, and he wanted to and and he said that that uh, you know because you, you cannot be Mexican and and get uh, asylum, but. But he was from Venezuela, so he was given asylum. And, uh, you know, he had that dream. Okay. The Venezuelan government didn't make him come. He wanted to come. Yeah, well, that's the thing. See, when you invite people, you get this type of people in it. Venezuela, Venezuela. Anybody. Nobody is inviting anybody. That's there, not there's, true. you know, Venezuela is just as worse as Haiti right Biden now. You Biden invited people. One thing is to say that, that the video that you keep saying is Biden just said, that we have to be accepting of other people in the world, something like that, right? Mm -hmm. That's not inviting people. That's not making them come over. People are people want to come here. People have wanted to be here for fifty years. Well, Biden didn't, I, I, well I, I, I'll say it again, Pablo. So it's no no confusing. He says, uh, "I want, and the minute I become elected, I want everybody to search the frontier and come to this country because that's who we are. Anybody who has problems in their own country, they can come over here and apply for asylum." So. Come to this country. Those are his words. Well, Roberto Garcia, that... I say, take care of our kids first, and then let's worry about the kids from outside of the country. Well, wait a minute. Yes. Mario, if, if the age of consent is 14 or 16 in the originating country, and we have 18, are they children or are they adults? They're adults. Oh. So they're, in their own country, they are adults at age, age 16, but they're adults here only at 18. No, you have to go by the laws of, of well, here. Well, the laws, I mean, conceptually, what, what do you otherwise think? Otherwise, you're going to have laws of, of Iraq or Afghanistan. We have to go by American laws. Well, you know, I'm just saying it's a conceptual idea that the, the DACA thing where 60 percent, 55, 60 percent of the people who came here were not little five-year-olds holding on to mommy's hand. They were 14 and 15 and 16-year-olds and 17, 18, looking for a job. Robert, Roberto Garcia has told us 
that it's okay, he endorses and supports coming to the U.S. just to get a better life and make more money. He was an illegal alien for 15 years hiding behind an expired visitor's visa until the Reagan amnestia, and then that allowed him to become a, a so, green card. Wait, Melania, so, Melania Trump was an illegal too. She came here without papers. <laughs> Melania, uh, you're right. But, but she was know, a porn actress. Yeah, but she became an actress and she got really Donald famous. Or, you know, and for he, people he, that is famous. And, and he cheated on her with a, with a porn star. So, yeah, know, well, well it up. I, I don't know about that. I wasn't there. You know, I didn't see it. So it's hard to. That's a. Uh, uh, do we. Uh, I still don't get an answer. Why is the reason that we let all these people come in across the border, having all these problems with child minors and trafficking? Because to me, it, it looks like the government is involved in this thing. Uh, how did they put all these many people together in the other side of the border, get them on a plane, and shove them all the way to this country? So it tells me the two governments are together working, and there's a lot of money involved in it. Yes. Can you say any uh, something on this? Yes. At the end of the day, everybody wants a better living. At the end of the day, we all want something better. And to be honest with you, our government, our... Mexican government, our Venezuelan government, Salvadorian government has failed our own people. people. So that is the reason why we are trying to come over here because we have the promised land and everything is different here and we are able to work here and produce dollars and those dollars are sent back home where it, it, it becomes more right so with that being said there's families that are coming together mom dad or mom, single mom single dad with kids because you know he mentioned how many, there's no kids yes there is he said uh, uh, the the um, percentage is adults but nowadays we have seen kids jumping the border with their parents we have seen videos of thousands, kids being thrown kids. over the fence Correct. and the parents stay back but the kids are being thrown over I, I mean you know you see the news you see that that's real that's happening so what happens when the kids are here? They are placed in foster care. They're placed in homes with families that cl claim to say family. But is there a, a, how how good and thorough is the scanning? Now with with uh, I, I forgot his name with Pablo, they did a really good scanning. They did really you know they made made sure that he says who he uh, who. He says he is, that he has the income to sustain and support, that he has everything that needs to be done. But what about the other ones that are not? Well, and, and, what this about is, the and, other and this is some time ago, and Pablo is quite a few years ago. It's not really now, recently. Nowadays. The local social services, the well, federal actually, okay. government is a disaster. Exactly. It, this is where I wanted to go. How many kids are born here and have been, you know, we, I mean, Social services have failed them. Child protective services have failed them. How many kids are we talking about? How many cases they have been killed by their own parents? And the social services, child protective services have gone to the house. That's what I'm talking have about. Not, and have not seen anything. According to them, there was nothing yeah. they, dangerous. They were not in, 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 in any kind of... Um, and the Danger, and, and, and therefore now we're talking about this kid is dead. In so, the beginning of the segment, I I say that I said they can't administer their own kids in here, and then now they have to worry about other people's kids from different countries in here. There's no way they can handle it. Yes. Now that right, becomes really overload, sad because kids are defenseless. Yeah. That's How do right. they speak up? What do they say? Who do they talk to? Who, if 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 so child protective services fails it this way, who are they talking to? Yeah, no. Who are they saying? How are they raising their voice? How are we uh, knowing that they're placed in correct houses? You're I right. mean, we don't know all this. That is the reason why this, I would say, all this uh, number of children that you're mentioning are missing because they don't have a voice because we don't know what they're, where they're really being placed, if they're really being taken care of. Uh, you know, they could even be changed. They, they could even change their names. Yeah, so. Identity. So, yeah, so, so uh, exactly right. For, the, for our people that watch this show, what would you recommend? You know what I mean? What, 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 what can you say to them? I said, be aware because if, if, right now, nowadays, when the kids get out, out of school and you know, they're walking on the street, anybody can drive by, just grab them by the, uh, hug them and everything, and put them in a car, and there, there goes your kid. It's true. It's true. See, it I, happens every day. You know, if, you, if you look in the community, so that's actually important. If you look in the community, keep an eye out because, uh, I, I mean, as an employee of, of the district, I'm, I'm what's called a mandated reporter. So it means if I see every year I have to I have to sign a piece of paper and I have to watch some training that says that if I see some kind of abuse or something, 
that I have to report it, that I'm required by law that if I don't do it, I could be I could be go to jail because I didn't because I didn't report so you it. Cover but see, up. with that being said, I don't think you should and, be the and only that's the one. Same thing you for know, teachers. teachers are also mandated reporters. They have okay, to do okay, it. Pablo, go ahead. But with that being said, I don't think you should be the only one, or the teacher should be the only one. I think anybody in the in the community should be and, able to say and report anything. Anybody. And should be taken and well, should yeah, be taken anybody seriously. Can, anybody can do it. Everybody has to take this personal. Everybody has to be This is personal. personal. This now, is very, very personal. Okay. As a parent, I, I don't want to mention my life or, or anything no, like no, that, no. but I am a single parent with six kids. And now, therefore, my, my, my biggest you, concern is to teach them in home, in my four doors, let them know this is what I you know, want you guys to do. If anybody's calling you or telling you, I, I actually asked because I knew I was coming to this uh, program. I asked my son, he's 10 years old, and I said, hey, if anybody comes to you and tells you your mom told me to come and pick you up what are you gonna say he's gonna say no she didn't because that is a no not a normal situation I am not put in that situation by my mom she would not put me now like I said at the beginning we have to be aware of what our kids are doing now cell phones are not like uh, like a luxury now they're needed but then at the same time us as parents we need to watch what they're doing because our kids are watching pornography they're uh, contacting adults and setting up meetings with adults and they're, they're therefore that's the kidnapping too that that's where trafficking and, and, comes um, in but as a thing. parent as a parent we need to train our kids at home we need to teach them he told me and i told him i don't care if it's an uncle i don't care if it's a whoever it is it's not a person that we uh always have communication with or we relate to all the time so if it's not something like your brother your sister and me don't go don't, with them. Don't go there. That's that's don't a very go good. With them. That's why I say, that's well, that's what would you recommend? You know, it's, and it's so suggestion. and it's so important. Uh, Jan Brisco, we're getting ready to wrap it up. Well, no, I I um, I'm an assistant scoutmaster in a troop, and the scouts, the Boy Scouts, age from uh, ten and a half up to seventeen, and I'm going to say that uh, ninety percent of the boys in my troop, up to age uh, grade eight, do not have a cell phone. What's a little eighth grader need a cell phone for? In my uh, uh, Pablo, do your boys have cell phones? Uh, my 14-year-old does, but my 12-year-old uh, 12, 12 does not. Okay. Does he need a cell phone, the 12-year-old? He wants one. He's been wanting one for two years. But, um, <laughs> Tough love. Two. No, the kids, that's the parenting part. And my advocacy, we talked about earlier, is parents have to set the parameters and set the rules, yes. watch their kids, train them what to say and do, say no to the pill at the party, because you can die, and hundreds of thousands have died from the fentanyl flood over the border. Um, no, it's parents are responsible for that. That's my my point. And cell phones. That's are also a, great a very good point because 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 I wanted to get into that. Um, there's a uh, in like for 20 years ago, I used to watch videos where where they would trick uh, sexual abusers. You know, they would they would message young girls, or they thought it was a young girl, but it was actually a police. And they would text her and say, oh, I want to see you, and I want to see you, and I love you, and things like that. And the guy would go there, and then he would, and then he would say, oh, who, who are you? And then, well, it's the police. And, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, um, so, and that's been going on for 20 years. So, so it, it's, it's like a fine line. If you, if you give your kid a cell phone, you know, you got to make sure that you know what they're doing. There's all kinds of guards that you could put on the cell phone. Now, with all this uh, school shootings and all that, I find it necessary at 10 years old, and he's the only one well, not, in elementary. I'm not criticizing. You know? I'm no, I'm just saying, like you, I know, like you said, there is a, a guideline. I think each parent should know what they're raising, who they're raising, how they're raising them. Um, I think that it was necessary for because all the school shootings happening, and the only way that some of these students were able to contact their parents was with this phone, or else we'll be talking about another number of missing children uh, exactly right, who yeah. didn't not who didn't have a way to communicate with the parent to come and pick them up wherever they were. So the, uh, you saw right on that. So now, in order for us, since we are concerned about the niños, what can we do to change? Your suggestion could be, you know, attention on the kids, uh, pay attention to them, give them a phone number after they become responsible, know how to use it, when to use it, well, you, you uh, or, 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 you know, uh, like uh, the most important thing is my suggestion is every single parent that is out there that has the power to vote, they must exercise their, their power of vote. Go and vote for the right person in order for, for us to have a change. 
Don't you think so? I think so. And, but the, and the other thing I would add to that would be educate yourselves. Okay. Your parents. I mean, we get so excited by having kids. And I, I, I could, you could get, you guys could all say, well, you have six. Yes, that's the reason why I'm saying it. We get so comfortable getting married, having kids, and we don't educate ourselves enough to be good parents to these kids. And so we need to educate ourselves before, before or prior to having a family. Good thing. And how, do they, how does people get educated? There's a lot of resources in schools. You could go get counseling in schools. You could even talk to your uh, primary doctor and tell them, hey, I need, you know, I need counseling. Mm -hmm. they, they do a referral if you're on medical, whatever assistance you're on, medical assistance. They do a referral. They approve it. And there, there you go. You start your sessions in counseling. So there's a lot of resources. Uh, very good answer. Very, very important. Another question is, what's your opinion on abortion? Since we touched the family and the balance of the family, what's your opinion on that? My, my opinion on abortion, I think um, I'm, I'm not in favor of it, but there I would also consider there is some situations where I would determine or I would think that it's okay. Uh, why? Because if, you're, if you were raped, if you were raped and you have a, you know, you're with a kid that you didn't mean to have, think of having or anything of this, you know, then what do you do? You don't want a kid out here also going into social services and in, in foster care and being raped, hit, uh, all kinds of abuse. Uh, okay, I, I, and, and knowing exactly how the but it's process hard. works, you know, it's so hard. It's hard. <laughs> you know, it comes in pieces, the little kids. A priest that I go to church, he says, that he calls them the shopping block. So it, it's an effective well, Mario, tool that, Mario, that the party you, uses it all the time. The party in power uses it. path, then what you're talking about is late-term abortion. Is the first trimester abortion okay with you? I don't think so. I'm not no. okay with any kind well, of no, abortion. I'm just, but I'm just it, yeah, it. no. The, the, personally, I don't think I'm a mother, so yeah. I, I'm personally no. not okay with any abortion. I'm not Period. in favor of it. Um, but I, you know, I can't. I can't be the judge of that. I think every person's going to be accountable for what they do, um, especially with when being pregnant. Uh, I think the beginning of it, before you try to do have an act of sex with somebody, you should tie your calzones and make up your mind. You know what I mean? That's the fact. Don't let a man tell you, give me a chance, you know, uh, a little bit, uh, <laughs> blah, 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 give me a taste of it. You say, you express that you love me, can you give me a little taste of it, can I give a kiss to? Don't go that route. Don't. No. No. Don't try it, because the minute you give the man a break... But this could happen even to married couples. I yes. was married for 18 years, and I, I, I had five kids with my first marriage. And, I mean, it was a consensual yeah. kid. We, we had a family together. Uh, you know, I, I think it's more than that. I think it's deeper than that. But it's all also psychological, you know, um, he decided to be a, a young adult again when oh, he was yeah. after <laughs> after he had family. But see, I don't have control over what he thinks. I have control over what I do. Right. And so when, when I stay with my kids, I tell them, no, um, there's birth control. There's no reason why in this day and day we're coming up with this, uh, oh, I got pregnant. Oops, it was an accident. Oh, my gosh. How that there, happen? Th exactly. There's no reason why we're still having kids as an I, accident. I will say, no I will say that that man was confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I will say that man was confused. What's now, your we, opinion, we, John Briscoe? No, we know where babies come from, and I go to you, contraception is available widely. We need to teach our children what their bodies are, how they work, and in the upper grades, how you don't have babies. Exactly. So, Paolo, yes. I go to you now because we're getting ready to wrap it up. This was a pretty lengthy uh, sta uh, statement, so go ahead. Well, no, I'm, I mean... Uh, Let's not try to punish women that, you know, end up getting themselves in a situation where they need to have an abortion. I think we should, it, it takes two. So let's hold the men accountable too. That, you know, I, I think a lot of men are like not responsible. And, and that, that's how some of these th things happen where you have, uh, you know, single mothers. So I, I, I give you a lot of credit because it's not easy to be a parent. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not fair that, that they have to do all, you know, all the work, and some of these people just run off and do something else, you know. So I think there's laws that that should be hold those people accountable that that are yes. not responsible. I agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that because at the end of the day, I think as a mother, we're we're left with. I mean, I I, I also know 
single parents, single uh, dads that do it by themselves, but is it the highest percentage of women doing it by themselves is higher than, than the actual men. So uh, there should be laws taking care, uh, uh, men uh, accountable for this. I agree with you. I agree with Pablo. John Briscoe, we wrap it up. You want to say goodbye? And, uh, oh, I can't say goodbye without saying vote for me, please. Goodbye, John goodbye, Briscoe. goodbye, goodbye, John goodbye. 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 For California 42. <laughs> I, we won the primary. We'll be on to the final ballot in November. John Briscoe, as soon as they nosotros. The family man. Special right. thanks to my guests on my left. A special thanks to my second guest, John Briscoe. I hope you guys enjoy the show. Please share the show to everybody out there. Compartan el programa. Está muy bonito. Y cada día vamos creciendo oh, más y más. La semana que viene lo vamos a hacer 100% español para que se programen. Tengo una invitada que viene de San Diego. Uh, I'm not going to tell you too much about it, but she's went through this. Really officially, I would like you to come back again to okay. the next show. I think you'll be uh, good as a support. She's been hurt. I want to tell you a story about her. She said they gave her five minutes to run away from her house because the mafia was right behind her. So oh, she, wow. they told her, pick up two changes of clothes. We got five minutes. Uh, and she says, and we're going to start running, and we're not going to stop. That poor lady is still running with the kids. She hasn't stopped. She's so scared. She, she lives uh, in a frontier, and she's being scared, and she's a survivor, and she's having a hard time. She's uh, seeing a psychological person every week, so she's having a hard, a hard time. She's going to come back to us and uh, be in our show. So it's going to be a very, very interesting show next week. La semana que tenemos un programa muy bonito. Quizás nos ponga a llorar la muchacha. We probably cry. I know you kind of feel the pain a little bit because you mentioned your kids and everything. And I know it's hard. Yes, and, yes. you know, I'm a family man, too. Uh, this guy over here is a family man. He represents the family. He's running for the Congress for his second district. So uh, on behalf of Mario Lino over here in Estrellas de Los Angeles, please uh, don't give up hope. Hope is the only thing we got left. So don't give it up. Fight for your kids. Fight for your family. And que viva the USA. Well, that's the show for this time. Remember, share the show, share our ideas, full of information, entertainment, and education, and most important, in search for the truth, the real truth, together. Oh.